I'm Katherine Comden, Behavior Program Manager at Willamette Humane Society in Salem, Oregon. Do you have a dog who needs to be muzzled at the veterinary clinic or grooming salon? Does that process make you or your dog uncomfortable? Did you know that you can train your dog to enjoy wearing a muzzle? It's a simple process, and having him or her happy while muzzled will help everyone relax, making veterinary and groomer appointments safer and easier on everyone. Kelsey Weber, a professional dog trainer and helpful volunteer at Willamette Humane Society, is joining me with some canine friends to show you how to make muzzle training fun and enjoyable on this week's Pets and People. Kelsey, thank you for coming on the show. I'm very excited to have you here. Thanks for having me. Yes, and so you are the owner and sole proprietor of Positively, Positively Trained. Trained in mm -hmm. Sherwood, Oregon. Mm -hmm. And you've been a dog trainer for some time now. How long? Yeah, about 10 years okay, now. Okay, great. And in your line of work, as um, I'm well aware of, we have sometimes a need for muzzles. Yes. Because we're working with dogs who maybe have some discomfort around certain procedures. So you've mm -hmm. done quite a bit of muzzle training. Yeah. usually. Usually I'm using muzzles for dogs that are nervous at the veterinarian or nervous at the grooming salon. So those are obviously really high stress areas for a lot of dogs. So having the muzzle on helps keep everybody safe on the human end and then also prevents any sort of you know negative consequences on the dog side of things Right, too. because as we both know is if a dog has a bite these days, it's very much not tolerated. It used to be people would say, oh, stay away from that dog, he bites. And mm -hmm. everybody would just, you know, the dog would bite and that was just what dogs did. But now the expectation is that we can do anything to a dog and he right. should tolerate it and not bite. And so right. one of the important things I want to make sure that we cover today is um, talking about a muzzle on the dog does not reduce the need to be aware of body language and right. to be aware of the triggers. So the muzzling training that you're going to see um, is important and important to help a dog relax about being muzzled, but in no way are we saying we're just going to slap muzzles on dogs and ignore their body language. So Correct. I do encourage um, our audience to look in on, on, the, on our website and look at the canine body language videos that we have posted there so that we're uh, minding those stress points mm -hmm. and not pushing dogs over threshold even though they're muzzled. So with that said, um, we've got a couple different muzzles here. Basically everything we need to train a dog to participate right. in muzzle training is, is here and more. And so um, we've got a variety of treats. Now why so many treats? You want to make sure you're finding a treat that the dog finds valuable. So every dog is different, just like people are. We want to make sure that we're using things that they really want to work for. So having different options help keeps it a little bit more interesting for the dog, and then we can decide, you know, at that moment, what is he really wanting to work for? Yeah, for sure. So in here, we've got um, we've got just some regular basic grain-free grain-free kibble and some grain-free jerky treats and some lovely Braunschweiger or liver pate. Um, some hot dogs and cheese always a good mm -hmm. um, go go to. But we also have some peanut butter and then some squeezed cheese which yes. is, is always very exciting to me. Yes. Dogs. And these are really good for when we get to the point of um, pushing the, the treat into the muzzle. We can reach in a little bit better with those. Right. Items. So that's why we have such a variety here. We have some different muzzles. Now um, I know in my line of work I see this a lot of times mm -hmm. that we'll just put this kind of a muzzle on but these nylon muzzles um, have some drawbacks. Right. So what we, when we put this on a dog, um, especially if we're just um, doing a minor procedure and it's only going to be a few seconds, it can be a reasonable tool. They're easy to put on. They're quick to put on. Um, they give the dog zero options for biting. Right. However. Yeah, the catch is that it does keep their mouth really tight. So when you have you know, a muzzle like this on a dog, they're not able to pant. They're not able to take treats very easily or if they need to go get a drink of water or anything like that. So right. it limits that. And it can be, therefore, much more distressing for Correct. the dog. Yeah. It can actually up their stress levels considerably mm -hmm. because you've just taken away any ability for them to communicate, hey, I'm not feeling good about this. Mm -hmm. And um, so while they're very, very safe for the people, um, they can be very stressful for the dogs. So I wanted to show you those. Ideally, what we're looking for in a muzzle is, is called a basket muzzle, and there's a number of different brands, but essentially it is um, a muzzle that is designed to cover the dog's mouth area, but allow them enough space to open their mouth to pant. They can um, dip it into a bucket for water. Mm -hmm. um, they can eat through the sides um, or lick uh, from the front, and yet they're completely safe. 
um, having it on. And so there's a couple of different brands that we have here, and no need to mention any particular brand, but you just want a one that, uh, that fits well to the dog and is very secure. This particular muzzle has an additional feature in that it has a strap that comes up over the dog's head, mm -hmm. which is good because... It's really good for the short-faced dogs because you don't want them to be able to pop that muzzle off That's their right. nose. It's, if it's not properly fitted or if, it's, um, if the dog is very, very motivated to get this off, um, this can sometimes be the difference between the dog having it on mm -hmm. or not. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and once it's off the dog and it's just dangling there by the collar, then everybody's at risk, especially yeah. if the dog is uncomfortable being handled. Now I've got to go in and try to get that muzzle refitted mm -hmm. and it's not okay. But essentially what I'm talking about is in the old days or in the urgent situations when we feel like we just need to get a muzzle on a dog very quickly, you know, we kind of do what you have to do, unfortunately, and that's not ideal. So if we take the, the time to teach a dog that a muzzle can actually be a great thing mm -hmm. and we want, it, we want the dog to feel happy right. when his muzzle is on because it makes such a difference when we're working around all the other triggers and yeah. teaching them. Yeah, I often take dogs out on their normal walks wearing a muzzle. Um, there's a lot of games that you can play while they're wearing the muzzle to really help add some extra excitement to, to that you know, time that they're spending with that on. Awesome. Okay, so we've covered a little bit about the treats that we need. We've talked about the kinds of muzzle. Let's talk just a little bit about fitting the muzzle and, um, and then we'll, we'll demonstrate. So the first thing that we want to do is make sure that the dog is into the game and ready to go because conditioning him emotionally to be prepared to wear the muzzle is a really important step of the process. Mm -hmm. We want the dog to be relaxed while he's wearing the muscles, uh, muzzle so that we can continue on with the other training and help him deal with um, whatever the reasons are that he needs the muzzle in the first place. So we've got all of our yummy treats and we're going to ask the dog, what do you think? Are you into it? And a dog that is comfortable taking the food is very likely a dog I can work with. If he is so nervous about my presence or the presence of the muzzle or the conditions and he's not taking the food, then that tells me something needs to change. So right. this kid seems pretty relaxed. Yes. So then the next thing we want to do is make sure that we are going to have a muzzle that fits. And there's lots of um, companies that sell really great basket muzzles, and they all have a fitting guide. So it's important to help the dog relax during the fitting process to make sure that he is um, not stressed about having you handle his own face because that's not going to help you down the road. So what we want to do is, if you'll just lure him with mm -hmm. a little bit of treat there, I'm going to take a piece of fabric, which is just a leash here, and I'm just going to grab a quick measurement just along the length of his nose. And what that does then is that gives me a measurement that I can hold up against a ruler and mm -hmm. get an actual measurement of that muzzle length. Mm -hmm. Then I need the circumference, and so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to have you do that while I do this. Whoops. And try that again. There we go. And I'm just going to grab a quick measurement. And that one can actually be a little bit liberal because what we want is not just the circumference of the face. We want the dog to be able to expand his mouth, pant, get mm -hmm. a drink of water. So when we're looking at those muzzling sizes, those muzzle sizes, I don't want the actual circumference of the dog's muzzle. I want to add some space so that they can open their mouth and pant. So be generous with that. Mm -hmm. Once we've got that and we've selected a muzzle, go ahead and hold that muzzle up. Yep. So that muzzle um, comes with a few extra straps and buckles and whistles, mm -hmm. um, which are important for keeping it secure to the dog's head. But you were talking about how you like to start with the training. Right, so I like to take away all the extra pieces in the beginning because I want to be really simple for the dog and I don't want to add any extra scary pieces to that muzzle. So in the beginning, I just want to associate that when the muzzle is presented, he gets goodies. So I'm just going to put the muzzle on the ground, feed him some goodies, take the muzzle away. Nice job, bud. Put the muzzle on the ground, feed him some goodies, <laughs> and then take the muzzle away. And so we're just creating this emotional response that when this muzzle comes out, he gets good things. The muzzle produces that food. And it's important to take the muzzle totally out of sight in between because that way the dog understands that the presence of the muzzle is what, is what equals the food, not just me sitting here steady feeding. Right. So present this is, that goodie. This is hard science. This is mm -hmm. classical conditioning. If you've ever seen Pavlov's, you know, the story of Pavlov's dogs mm -hmm. and how the bell predicted the food, this is essentially the same thing. Right. We're taking something that means nothing to the dog yet because right. it's his first time seeing it. This particular dog does not use a muzzle mm -hmm. and has not been trained to wear a muzzle. 
puzzle, but we knew he'd be a good model for this because, I mean, look at him. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's pretty easy, relaxed. Easy <laughs> and relaxed to work with. Uh -huh. So bringing up a really good point that we want to have a participant that's relaxed. So. And that is willing to do the exercise. If he was showing me that he was nervous or uncomfortable, then I might start with the muzzle a little bit farther away okay. um, or change the, the scenario, the environment a little bit to help him feel more comfortable right, too. Right. But he's being pretty good with me putting this muzzle <laughs> right next to his face. So I'm just going to go with that point because he's showing me he's okay with that. Okay. And so what's the next step? So next step is I want to teach him how to put his own nose in the muzzle. I don't ever want to shove this on his face because that can definitely be stressful. Mm -hmm. So I want to hold the muzzle in a steady position so that he can put his nose <laughs> in it. Good boy. And then I'm going to stick a treat through one of the little holes so that he can access that treat by sticking his own nose in that muzzle. I Good really boy. like how you held it back out of his space mm -hmm. and you're waiting for him to come. To put his own nose mm -hmm. in. Yeah, I like to see that he can come forward because that shows me that he's nice and confident and he's not worried about this. Right. I have a lot of people who, um, even when they're, you know, well intended, mm -hmm. there's this impulse to kind of shove it towards the dog. Right. But no, especially a dog that has handling sensitivity, fear mm -hmm. issues, that's the last thing that you want to do. Right. And a lot of times what I'll do is I'll even just stick the muzzle on my leg so that that way I'm, I don't have that impulse to move it forward. If it has an anchor spot, <laughs> good boy, that's Paw not what we're looking for. targets are a whole different <laughs> game. If the muzzle has an anchor spot, then I don't make that mistake of pushing I it like forward. It. That's a really great tip to anchor it on your leg. And as he gets better with this, I'm going to slowly start asking him to stick his nose further and further into the muzzle. So I'm just moving my treat placement from hole to hole and going farther to the front. I like it. <laughs> so Good now boy. here you're using um, some of the firmer treats that we have. Mm -hmm. Would you ever use some of the, um, the softer things? You definitely can. Yeah, this is just, it's a little bit faster right now to do the, the more firm treats, but the softer treats work really well, especially the ones that have these nozzles, or you can use a spoon with peanut butter, because then he can reach his nose in there and lick the end of that peanut yeah, butter. Let's just too. demonstrate that really quick, mm -hmm. because for a dog that doesn't want to stick his face all the way into the muzzle, this is a great way to make the transition. You're luring the dog forward, you're helping him uh, to relax, and the peanut butter really sustains the reward mm -hmm. because it yeah, takes a little time. Long lasting. Takes a little time to deal with <laughs> There's there. some extra peanut butter left in there yeah, for you. Yeah, and there's too. always a little bit on the, <laughs> a little nice bit on the front job. end, so that's okay. <laughs> he says, I like this game, this uh -huh. is really awesome. Okay. And it's good to do this in short sessions, too. If I push him too long, he might get bored with the muzzle, so I want to okay. make sure that he thinks it's really fun. So let's take just a little bit of a break to give him a break, and we'll be right back. Okay, so after a little break, he's ready for round two mm -hmm. here. <laughs> and so why don't you show us the next step? We've got him comfortably going in. Right. When you take a break in a session, do you just pick up exactly where you left off? I always like to test to make sure he remembers where we left off. Perfect. So I want to go back just a couple of steps, make sure he understands the game, and then move on to the next okay. piece. So I'm just going to present that goodie inside the muzzle. See, <laughs> he's a little confused there. There we go. Remember the game. Good boy. And... I just like him to stick his nose back in there a couple of times because we're actually going to work on duration next. So it takes me a second to buckle that muzzle on his nose. I want him to feel comfortable holding it there for a moment. So I'm going to have him stick his nose in, wait just a second, yes, and then I'm going to give him a goodie. Good. So that way we can start building up that duration piece. Good. And duration is really important yes. when we're thinking about what we need the dog to actually do while he's wearing the muzzle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, usually it's on for more than a couple seconds. Yes, so we need normally. to build that up. <laughs> And uh, yes, so not only boy. do we want him relaxed in its presence and relaxed putting it on, mm -hmm. we want to maintain that relaxation right. as he wears it. And uh, some people do yes. this just by distraction. They'll get the mm -hmm. dog wearing the muzzle and then they'll just take him for a walk. Yep. And that can be fine, but it can also blow up. It can yes, also happen boy. that the dog is um, you know, okay for a moment and then as he walks and he feels that muzzle bouncing and then mm -hmm. he just starts panicking and scratching and clawing to try to get it off. And now you have an emotional response that you didn't yes. want to begin with. Right. So this is a valuable step, teaching the dog it's okay for a longer amount of time mm -hmm. and life will go on. It's a little weird, but this is how we get food and things are good. Right. So again, looking at his body language and his interest in the game, it mm -hmm. looks like he is ready for a little bit more. Yeah, definitely. So we're just going to build up that duration and you can practice that in multiple sessions, but we're going to move on to the next step, which is going to be introducing the straps. Okay. So there's a couple different ways you can do this and it's going to depend on your dog's comfort level. So if they're used to things going over their head or around their neck, you can just wrap it over and work on buckling it. But again, we're always going to do it in baby steps. So I'm just going to work on, <laughs> I see you. Um, I'm just going to work on having him 
be okay with me putting that over, giving him a goodie. You need about 14 hands to do this, so sometimes it's a coordination piece as well. Right. So we're gonna have him put his nose in, over the head, give him a goodie. And so when I'm playing with this, again, I'm watching his body language. If he's not okay with me doing that method, the other thing you can try is if you buckle this a little bit loose, and then hold the strap at the base of the muzzle, then you can just slide that back over his head as he sticks his nose in. So he puts his nose in, I can slide it over oh, his ears yeah. that way. That's a great... And sometimes that makes it a little bit easier. From that point, I can then just tighten that strap while it's already on him. That's Good lovely. Boy. That is really lovely because that avoids the whole reaching over the top Correct. of the dog, which a lot of dogs are uncomfortable Correct. with. Correct. Another thing that I do sometimes when I'm working on desensitizing the strap is that's when I'll pull out the really smeary food and yeah. I'll put it on the inside of the muzzle right at the front so mm -hmm. he's got something to work on and yeah. generally he's getting the association that he's going to be able to eat that stuff while I'm working over his head but I, I really like this this is a great hack good boy. I like it yes. good job so this That's particular nice. dog doesn't seem to have any issues with you messing around his head mm -hmm. or his ears some of the dogs that especially if they're needing the muzzle for veterinary right. work or for grooming they might be a little bit sensitive about mm -hmm. having their head handled so we might want to stop and work on that in an entirely different show and right. in fact we've got one coming up to yeah. talk about that very <laughs> thing but um, for today's purposes we're going to assume that your dogs are okay having their heads handled enough that mm -hmm. you can get the muzzle on them comfortably right so when we're working through this what do you usually recommend in terms of sessions having the people work on the session is there an X number of times or um, we want to create that this is a really fun thing so you as long as they are willing to play you can't do this too much if you spend a couple of minutes every day doing it that would be amazing um, shorter sessions for dogs typically are more effective because that repetition of starting yeah. a new session is, is a pretty fun thing for them. Um, but yeah, as often as you can is a good thing to do and we want to make sure that the dog is still willing to work. So mm -hmm. if at any point he's getting bored or frustrated, I want to really look at, you know, maybe is that session too long or am I making it too challenging? And the big thing is knowing how to read your dog's body language so you can base the sessions off of them. Right, so you mm -hmm. want to stop before they start to get stressed or frustrated right. too much. And so why don't we see how far we can get mm -hmm. with um, actually having him uh, put go ahead and put that on okay. adding a little bit of duration and at this point since we're just brand new this is only his second little session mm -hmm. uh, with us we wouldn't ever keep it on too long but we should be able to do several seconds so we'll right. see how he does there so I'm gonna ask him to put his nose in with that treat I'm gonna slip that over his ears and buckle that good boy nice job I always like to give him some bonus treats as we're working on it because, you know, we fumble a little bit as humans. Good boy. And I want to be able to feed him more goodies. I like to use a second hand to stabilize that muzzle as I'm feeding. By having him place his chin on my hand, I can easily deliver that food because sometimes you're doing a little bit of target practice right. trying to get that treat in his nose. Yep. And I'm just noticing as we um, are using this muzzle that it is too big for this dog. Yeah, he's this swimming is, in it a yes, little bit. Yes, uh, <laughs> So it would not be a good muzzle for him. It was great for demo. So there's a little bit of discomfort, yep. and we're going to pull that all the way off. Now, this happens, mm -hmm. right? It was unintentional. We're so sorry. He <laughs> says, I can forgive he's you. He's like, I'm ready for I'm, more I'm cheese. I'm ready for more cheese. <laughs> so he's, he's excited by it, and he says, I think mm -hmm. I can do that again. But what we want to do is we want to back up a few steps. So if we have a failure, if we have a sign from the dog that says, mm -hmm. whoa, that was too much. And for this dog, that meant that he was oh. pawing at the muzzle and mm -hmm. trying to escape Stay. it. So we, we pushed, yeah. and I wanted to do that, see what would happen, mm -hmm. and that's what we got. Mm -hmm. So what we're gonna do then is we're gonna back up some steps, and why don't you show how we kinda get started again. Right, so I wanna make sure, again, I always wanna test the exercise, so I wanna see, can you put your face back in here? Good boy. So he's pretty comfortably stuffing his face right back in there, he remembers that part of it. If he was nervous there, we would just back up a little bit further Good. and work on slowly luring him back into that muzzle. Um, a big part of it too is, like you mentioned, this is only his first day practicing the second session so um, you know that's pretty typical if you do stick the muzzle on right in the first day it usually Way too fast. yeah it usually mm -hmm. does take a few days to really get him used to that and remembering that this is a good thing that produces cheese the other thing to, th to keep in mind is we can work on duration mm -hmm. here Mm -hmm. Right, just without the strap. Right, right, right. Because then he's just, not stuck. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then he's not stuck. And that can actually build into a very nice, voluntarily, I'm going to hold my face in there right. a really long time before we even start any yes, of the motion exercises. Boy. Nice job. Okay, well, Flame, you've been an excellent mm -hmm. model. We're so thankful for that. I do mm -hmm. have one other dog available to us who's actually done a few more sessions of muzzle training. Okay. So we're going to take a little break and come back with, um, with her and him.
him. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll show where you can go with this. Excellent. Good boy. We're back with Epi, who is 10 years old, also a dog that has never worn a muzzle, but uh, has had a little bit of training on wearing one just mm -hmm. for the show. And so I thought it would be good to show um, a different energy dog. She is definitely a lot more gung-ho about the food. And so um, I thought I would check in with her. She's very interested in the peanut butter, so we'll give her a little lick there. And I can tell by her body language and facial expression that she is definitely into what we're doing. So I'm gonna offer the muzzle, since I've not done the work with her, I want to make sure I go back through some of those early steps that you were talking about, mm -hmm. making sure that that sort of thing is going to transfer over because we have a brand new trainer to her. There we go. What do you think? She says, I'm all in. So I'm going to get a little more peanut butter. I like being able to use the spoon for the treat delivery because um, then I'm not sticking my finger in there. Right. And um, for dogs that can be a little bit sharky or grabby, that's a great tool. But again, notice that I'm allowing her to come all the way in instead of me coming to her on that. So we're going to go like this. And <laughs> she's come around the side. She's looking from the outside. And I just pull away and say, yeah, that's not going to work for you. But that will. There we go. And it's okay for her to have a few moments of just enjoying that. And she's just getting the same association that all good things happen when you stick your face in there. And so that's very good. If we have a dog who is um, difficult or challenging with this and, and not feeling comfortable about it, or um, we're having, uh, you know, she's just a lot of energy, so I've got Kelsey mm -hmm. hanging on to her for me so I don't get knocked down. Um, what I can do then is I can actually use my friend to provide some of the backup there and then also to manage some of the um, some of the strap action here. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is I've got the cheese now in the palm of my hand and then I just smash it up through the bottom of the muzzle and we'll go ahead and we'll check in with her about this piece and then we'll relax it and we'll pull it away. And so again we're going to come forward. She puts her face right in the muzzle and I'm going to bring this strap up and over. Maybe, maybe not. And we'll try again. And the nice thing about it is if um, things aren't going particularly well, you just get another shot at it. You just get another try. And so as long as the dog is having a good time and things are going well for her, then, um, then she's willing to keep on trying and we can just keep on making progress. Some people object to how slimy this <laughs> is. And, um, you know, I guess you just kind of get over it. And, <laughs> and I do what I need to do for the dog. My main thing is that she's comfortable in having that on. So let's go ahead and buckle that up. Nope, and she backed up just a little bit. She right. said, I'm not ready for that, and that's just okay. All right, we're not going to worry about it. We don't want to stress her. We want her to remain as relaxed as possible. So in time, we would add some duration and help her to feel more and more relaxed, and then we would just um, start adding in some activity, short periods. Mm -hmm. How often, do, what do you recommend usually for getting started with actually wearing the muzzle out in public? Um, I just do a couple minutes at a time and I try to make sure that we're doing fun things. So like I said, I want to make sure that she's getting treat delivery, um, maybe doing walks or playtime. I do a lot of hand targets. I think that's a really good muzzle game to play because that's something they can do with the muzzle on. Sure. So if you do hand target, deliver treat, hand target, deliver treat, pull the whole gear off, then she figures out, oh, we get to play fun games while I'm wearing it. Yeah, for so sure. So that's another good thing to play with too. And again, making sure that they can open their mouth and pant while they're mm -hmm. wearing it is an excellent, um, <laughs> excellent thing, especially if, there's, if they're on a walk or they're having any kind of activity mm -hmm. or stress because they're worried about being at the vet or the right. groomer, they need to be able to open their mouths and pant right. and get rid, of, get rid of that stress. <laughs> okay, well, I think she's really excited and that yeah. she would like to continue the training, but in the interest of time, we're going to go ahead and stop today um, because it would take a few more sessions over right. a period of time to get her relaxed enough to actually wear the muzzle and walk around with it. Thank you, Epi, for coming on the show. Mm -hmm. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in today. I am so glad that you did, and I hope to see you on the next show. Meanwhile, come on down to the shelter at Turner Road, <laughs> where you just might meet your next number one fan.